World of Warcraft, right? You click on it, it's like, zug, zug. Me not that kind of orc. What are you doing? Leave me alone, right? Or whatever those things. Are we going on your um, orc huh? molestation uh, no! issue again? See, you, that's dark. That's daddy day day dark. Or daddy day day dark. You're the one that talks about stop touching me there. No, okay, I was, I was talking saying. about a fungus who might like some uh, interaction with orcs. No, dude, that's all. The we're, we're not judging you. It's okay. <laughs> we're going to weird places yeah, this, now, is, this is a safe space. No. This is a safe space. <laughs> not for the fun guy or the orcs right now. Although the majestic night sky could deliver light, a fire was still required at night to keep the pathfinders warm. As one of them set up the campfire, the mage among them spoke an incantation and quickly shot a fireball at the wood on the ground. This delivered the catalyst for the warmth that would soon be delivered, keeping them warm on this cold winter night. Welcome to Ashes Pathfinders, your dedicated and trusted Ashes of Creation podcast. Join us as we share in the journey that reignites the embers and rekindles the flames in the hearts of those long left to cinder. I am your host, Simorg. And I am joined today by our returning Pathfinders. Let's welcome back your Ash and Herald, Daedalus. Hello, everyone. Also, welcome back everyone's favorite cult leader, Armored Cell. Hello, I missed you all. <laughs> Missed you too. What are you? Are you drinking blood of your enemies in that chalice there? Is that what that is? My chalice. Yeah, I I, I bought a chalice. Yeah. I needed a chalice. Needs After that was the salty tears of his enemies. We haven't <laughs> gotten into the point in showing there's right? blood yet. Yeah, because this thing on on uh, Discord is the god of salt must be pleased. It's been up there yeah, for. He- Right. Yeah, he said that. He said, he said that on a quote, and I was like, "Yeah, that's that, that's got to be that's got to be it." <laughs> well, everyone, look before we dig in, we got to give a shout out to the home of this podcast over at AshesHQ.com, the community curated website for all things Ashes of Creation. Also, shout out to all of the Imperial Flames, which are the supporters here on Twitch, over YouTube, and well. All the places you see this show. Thank you so much for keeping this community's flames bolstering greater week after week. Speaking of week, if you want to do us a solid this week, go over to our iTunes, give us a five star review, leave us a comment. We can read that here live. You can do that over at Ashes Pathfinder on Twitter. And it's pinned to the top there with all the podcast places. So please consider doing so. We get to 100, probably be giving away something pretty righteous. We got a ways to go, but it would be greatly appreciated if you haven't already taken some time to do so. And you do indeed love the show. Um, Knights of the Phoenix, we are recruiting. It's a guild, community-based guild for this community, but we will also be playing Ashes. So if you're looking for a good community, do slide into my DMs on Discord. Um, You can join us on community days, usually on most Fridays, and see some of the community members hanging out then. Uh, shout out to all the people supporting over on our Ashes HQ YouTube friends. Just a quick announcement until the end of this year, things are going to be a little um, light over there because we're just going to be doing the podcast. We might get a video here and there out, but we'll be kicking things back up into the early part of next year. So if it's a little lacking over there, keep take it easy, chill for a while. We're going to be enjoying the, um, the holiday and I hope the rest of you all will be doing it as well. And uh, we'll be kicking it back in full speed again over there into the new year. Um, oh, shout out to all the Kofi supporters, specifically the Radiant Core members and above, Zod, we're talking about you. Um, those are all the people that support over on Kofi. So if you want to do so, you can consider supporting the show and all the things here over there. All right, cool. Gentlemen, why don't we catch up a little bit? Armored Cell wasn't here last week. We had Faisal, who's going to be gone for a little while, but... I don't know what's going on. Armored Cell was like, he posted in Discord last week. He was talking about things that he might be showing off today. We're going to hear what he had to say about the last dev stream. And then we're going to dig into some of the Q&A stuff that we promised we would pick up and talk about. And believe it or not, there's quite a bit to talk about there. So buckle up, get your refreshments, and uh, let's get started. I guess, first of all, What's everyone been up to since last time? And Armored Cell, why don't we go with you since you've been gone a little longer? Uh, so it's been a new wipe. So new wipe with Rust. Uh, oh. I've got, I'm being with a new group that I haven't really been before. And we've actually synergized really bloody well. Nice. Like, it's 
we got like a decent amount of PVP, a decent amount of farmers. Like we've got excess amount of loot, like absolutely just too much loot. Like there's boxes and boxes outside. So me and me and the guys have been doing that. Like the other night, I spent like from twelve a.m. to three a.m. just annoying another group, Jeez. like destroying the turrets, their SAM sites, wasting like a good two weeks worth of their their resources. It was great. Wow, um, it was news. a good time. Saying yeah, making new friends was good though. Um, so we've been doing that for the last two weeks. Um, mm. I wasn't here last week because uh, my um, my auntie in law she uh, decided to uh, put in some uh, ducted air conditioning. It's, it's Australia, nice. so it's very hot over here. Yeah. So very thankful, but also oh, yeah. they had to cut the power off. Mm. So I was like, no stream, but I can't be ungrateful because I'm getting a, a, a ducted air conditioning. Like, and no kidding, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's super good. But like, we had recently had like a forty degree uh, day, and the, the aircon oh. really helped. It was it was great. Yes. I don't know what that is in um, Fahrenheit, but. Pretty hot. That's probably yeah. over a hundred close to it. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez, yeah. man. Yes. So yeah, I've been doing that. I the package I ordered finally arrived. What was it? Um so it's in the back there if you can see it, but I might press bring it forward. I can't so Simi, you uh what? abandoned us for one of those weeks, if you remember. Mm. And uh I felt very lonely and I didn't know where to turn. <laughs> oh no, what did he? So there's some official, unofficial merch oh, from Samu. What? So Simi, yeah. I'd like you to meet. Oh, shit. I'd like you to meet my little angel or devil on my shoulder, Mini Simi. Oh my god! Are you serious? That's amazing. <laughs> no, you didn't, dude. So he, he sits on my shoulder and he he's gonna whisper, sweet, sweet, sweet. Juicy loot in my ears. Oh no, he doesn't. That's not oh, even yeah. me. What happened to me? It is you. That's definitely uh, you. What? Is, what am I drinking? It's a real question. It's like it looks like whiskey and a cigar. Yeah. What's that? Is the other side the same or different? Yeah, it's the same. Yeah. My God, dude. The wife would let me get a, a, a body oh, size pillow one. God. So what? sorry. Mate. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> so you just have to make do with uh. It did come off a couch, but I couldn't afford a couch. <laughs> I don't know what that was about, but I don't know why you're mentioning a couch. It's a really strange thing to bring up right now. Yeah. I, mean, um, I have a perfectly clean couch behind me right now. I just wanna I just wanna point that out. Yeah, I'll just put him here. He's, he can he can assist it. <laughs> Did he at least come with sanitizing wipes? Is just just asking for a friend. Oh come on, dude. <laughs> oh my god, dude. Wow, man. That's uh that's a first right there. And, and FYI, everybody, uh, this is one of those moments you just had to be here to see it. Um, and if people are going, well, what? If they're just listening and they're going, what in the hell are they showing off? It, there's no way to describe this. Um, you just you just got to see it for yourself. And also, I had not known that that's what was uh, going to be. I, oh, yeah, my this God. This is the complete first reaction for me. Like, I had... Yeah, what was gonna happen? But it, oh, it was God, everything that dude. I wanted to be and more. <laughs> I was like, this, this, is why, "This is why you don't abandon me, man." I need, I need to mean it. I was you sorry. left me alone for a week. I, now, I, now, I got, now I got friendship. I was gone. I was gone. So wait. So there's the question. My cheeks hurt. What, what? When? When the? When the? When the Pathfinder <laughs> podcast doesn't happen, and you're you're. How does this help with the loneliness is what I'm trying to understand. I don't know. I don't know. It was impulsive. I've, I'm very impulsive. And I felt, I saw it and I felt like this is what I need to do. Mm. And now I, I, I don't regret it, but my wallet sort of does. That's okay. <laughs> Your wallet sort of does. Is that what I think you just did right there? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> wow. I had nothing to do with this at all. The, Be grateful. The, they also sold underwear. Oh my god! No, 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 dude. Can you imagine <laughs> someone taking a picture of my face? I, I would. Love, I don't even know what I'd do. Can you imagine? I'd be like, mm. I bet they make blankets too. We could get Faisal a blanket. You know? right, right, I right. don't choose a blanket, but it's usually <laughs> it's for like my feet because they're <laughs> cold all the time. So yeah, that would be interesting. 
all of us have some sort of you know my god dark overlord paraphernalia not, i'm not a dark overlord okay so like, i want to talk uh, about that too at some what, point what do you want to talk about okay so oh no so you know what's my narrative right what is my narrative You're my narrative leader is, and the salt well, god of salt must be pleased no the the ancients are good guys right no, they're then, not. then they're, they're misunderstood and mm, if yes, you haven't told us that. what your you you haven't told us what your religion is yet for uh for your paladin you're right i haven't I, I well i'm i'm gonna reveal this right open why are we saying that he's the dark overlord if i'm saying that the ancients are good this is a great Wouldn't point this is a great point i don't i don't, I don't wait, think no, he's no, being... no, no wait whoa hold on I'm just going to no. say one of you has some delusions. I'm not going to pick out which. You, I'll just let the audience He just decide. tried to bait me into that. I'm not taking that bait. No, I'm sitting out of this one. You you have this conversation with Daedalus. <laughs> so what what I'm trying to get at is I don't think he's been lying. I just think he's been telling half truths. No. So so look at look at this guy. This was before the live stream, right? <laughs> before the live stream. Now, who does this markings remind you of from the last live stream? Wait, what? No, 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 no. If you look oh. at the cult, the cult guy from oh the God, first dude. people that went to Vera, mm. aka the Alpha Zero testers, <laughs> became cultists. <laughs> does this markings not look like God. the cultist? No, they look You're like Grogoff wrong. Critical Role. Because that's what the picture was. I took it off of, and and if you're trying to, and, and and also like I that that picture of me that you're using, that picture was taken long before we ever had a cultist reveal from Ashes. So, but you still not, went to Alpha Zero before that. You um, had inside information before then. Can't get from or deny that. Yeah, you can't. You can't. But I'm theorizing. I'm 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 thinking that cultist is based off the Alpha Zero testers. The very first people to go into Vera. I mean, I, I don't know what to say about that. It's an interesting theory. Because, like, if, like, if you think of Alpha Zero as the first people that went to Vera, the the um, the battle royale, the uh, APOC, was the ending of Vera. So the each game iteration is actually the timeline of the the world itself. That's an interesting theory you have, and I, I don't really know what to tell you. It just sounds like some cult stuff to me, honestly. I mean, it sounds like, like misdir misdirection of the truth and like mis misrepresenting things to like, you know, like twist it to your dark agendas as a dark overlord that you actually are right because you said I'm not actually potentially evil. You said that the ancients, you know, are you guys. Yeah, we yeah, all know yeah. that they're not. So perceive it right. No, that's good. That, that definitely yeah. good. That, they're just like mis they're just misunderstood children. Steven said that they're inherently evil. Mm. Are you saying Steven's wrong? I thought you would never disagree with Steven because you're the Church of Stevenism. He, no, he's, he's yeah. trying to put you off. The, he's trying to put you off the scent. <laughs> he's trying to put you off the scent. He's revealed uh, too much at the beginning. He's trying to like cover what? his tracks. No, no, what? No, Pff, no, no. no. Come on, hard sell, buddy. Come on. It's not. It's not twist up the yeah, truth. I, so I swear, much. me and me and him are on the same wavelength because there's no way I could have ordered this a week and a half prior to the stream, and then he reveals the cult. Oh. Like I feel like that's that's we're on me and Stephen are on the same wavelength here. That is I'm exactly. Like, Note: I'm streaming from Sim's backyard, as you can see behind me. They're all come on, dude. <laughs> Sim's backyard. This is ridiculous. How about we get on to talking about ashes, you guys? Huh? All this right, can't right. be about some false narrative. We can't. This isn't the false narrative show. Okay. This is the Ashes Pathfinder show. So we'll talk ashes. Okay. Everybody, everybody watching and listening is probably thinking the same thing right now. I'm sure. I'm sure. Okay. So, Armored Cell, why don't you begin by telling us? what your overall thoughts and feedback are related to the last developer live stream since you were here, like your big takeaways, things that you really liked, maybe even the things that like, you know, you felt like mm, could have been done different. And I also want to like add this additional bullet point for you. Feel free to chime in on it. Cause people, some people are pretty, uh, pretty heated about the last developer live stream. Um, saying that they didn't really, what was it? They let show off a lot or dweedle or whatever. Yeah. 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 I, I think that the sentiment mm -hmm. was that it wasn't enough 
yeah. in comparison to other streams, yeah. which yeah, Dweedle or whatever. It was it was yeah. different. I think it, 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 maybe it didn't show enough of the a clip mm. as people thought. But yeah. honestly, it just felt pretty balanced in comparison to what they did. Um, and I think that and like the mobs were too easy again. Something that was clarified. I'm just like too. like really we're gonna complain about the mob strength and a preview yeah. video on stuff it's like dude like, yeah. that's not that's not really something that they're weird. not gonna be like here's how strong we made this this mob and then we're gonna be like oh cool you could have just do just tweak numbers that's what it's like you, like yeah. it's it's the start of it like you can't just he's that's showing off the mechanics of the characters not the, yeah. the mechanics of the creatures right <clears throat> the, the creatures are just fluff at this point that they could be yeah. anything that i've seen yep totally agree but like the whole point of them like talking about oh it's not as big of a stream or they didn't show enough it's like i feel like you're getting a little bit greedy there's been plenty of streams that have been way less than what we saw in the cleric video there's been like it was a long video it was it had a new environment it had some creatures that we i haven't seen yet it had new skill sets it had a new uh a resource management system which i haven't heard of yet which was i actually really yeah. like Right. Um, and if you go from the last live stream of the not like, was the last live stream for the um, resource gathering, yep, yep. Did, did you not see the big trees in the background? Yeah, I saw did they not see trees were harvestable? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Every tree. So those trees are bloody massive. Those are probably the trees that you need two people to, to, to saw it down. That's what I thought too. Group trees. Like these are the things you got to think. Like it's not just what you what they're pointing out; it's what they're not pointing out as well. Yeah. Well said. Like, yeah, well said. Just it's like there'll be bigger streams. Yeah. Like, but the, the, there was a main focus point of the cleric, and they want your feedback on what the path are going down. That's the main point. They want feedback. If, if there's something that you got good feedback about, not just complaints of saying we want to see more. Like, we, as Stephen said, you'd want to know the law, but you don't. You want to experience the law, not uh, know about it now. Like you just want to experience the game. You don't want to actually like. It's hard because everyone everyone's getting a little impatient, and we just got to try and be a bit more uh, calm about it. Because it like we don't want the game rushed, right? The game will come out. It's but it's going to come out when it's good and ready. Yeah, well said. I think too. Like sometimes people just need to chill out a little bit, man. People get a little too whatever about things sometimes what what did you feel like were were like your highlights though like for you personally uh the highlights um i did like the skybox um i did my one one thing i would like to say is i would like the i'm hoping that then depending on how, what the moon if the moon has a cycle it will depend on how light or dark the environment mm -hmm. is i'm not talking like pitch black I'm talking like maybe your like your radius around you is more darker. So like instead of it being like this, it's more shrinking depending on how light the moon is. Um, that's probably how I'd see. It. So that's why it's not like every everywhere's like pitch black. Right. And rust, pitch black is not fun. It is not right. fun whatsoever. I agree. Or survival games. I mean, I do agree. I think the skybox could be brought down a little bit and the shadows could be worked on, but I'm also going, you don't always really get that sort of work right now either. You usually get it yeah, no. a little later, yeah. but feedback That's time. totally a polished pass, yeah. Agree. Yeah. And they're well, getting that, that, feedback on it now, which is like, yeah, people yeah. like, okay, well, it's too bright, fine. <laughs> that was the intent of this stream, is to get feedback. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah, my, main, my main highlight would be, I did like the, um, like the the resource, the main that was my main takeaway from it was a resource of um of what was it called again? Um, I honestly um, can can tell help me out. I can't remember the resource or the cleric. Uh, the, Is it the synergy? You're like no, the conviction, stun, like staggers. Conviction, stun. conviction. That's the one. Yeah. Oh, conviction. Yeah, conviction. Sorry. So taking it something else. I'm wondering if um you can get like high conviction by doing more religious quests or something like. Maybe like like a mana bar oh, sort of thing. Interesting. Because like like what what do you think of when you think of conviction, right? Uh, it's like uh, praise to your holy warrior yeah. lord or god. Yeah. Um, so like I'm wondering if you can increase that or 
uh, maybe affect the efficiency of how you use your conviction. I know mm. you're saying that some of the spells use conviction and yeah. some of the spells are like when they use certain spells together, they'll either buff it or like, I like that. Yeah. That, that adds like another level to you because now you're not just like, oh, he's casting spells. Like, is he casting a spell at full conviction or is he now casting it at um, just base level? So now like you've got to think about these things roll in the fight as well, right? So there's some things that you might be able to tell at all. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe, we, do you reckon you should be able to tell that from like in fight when you're versing someone? I mean, potentially, yeah. Like, do you think the spell should be more vivid or something if they're using like a more powerful spell? I think, well, okay, so we know that you're gonna have the icons. Like, let's say I'm targeting you, right? And Daedalus yeah. heals you. If I'm targeting you, I'm gonna be able to see an icon to showcase what that spell is. If I were to hover it, I'll be able to see or probably have an indicator. Like, let's say potentially it's a stack or something. I'll see a two. Maybe there's like a different uh, color around the, the cooldown. If it's like, you know, certain potency, maybe it goes from like green to yellow to red or something like that. If yeah. I'm targeting somebody. Um, so I think at that level, sure, because we know we're going to have the icon for uh, buff oh, yeah. or whatever. I understand but... for us, go, uh, if I'm the cleric, yeah. I'm talking about if you're versing the cleric, how would yeah, you tell they're using it? Yeah, yeah. you'll still be able to there too. Yeah. 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 So I think that's good enough because I think there needs to be a little bit of mystery, you know, like, for example, let's say I'm in a combat situation with somebody and the clerics got convictions rolling. Right. And I've got the choice to like cleanse or interrupt or something like that. You know, I can remove that somehow Then I think the cost benefit analysis in a combat situation like that is. Um, well, I could interrupt at any time. I could cleanse at any time or whatever to potentially, let's hypothetically say I could remove that. You probably aren't going to want to remove the first one. You're probably going to want to remove like the, the higher stacked one, right? So then the cost benefit analysis is there is I need to make sure like uh, Claris using these convictions, they're using certain skills, they're boosting their heals, whatever. And if I want to like impact this the most, I'm going to need to impact the more potent heal with the greater conviction. So you've still got like, I can see it, but am I paying enough attention to interrupt what's going to be the greatest uh, benefit to them versus lower benefit? And then I waste my, my interrupt or my cleanse or cooldown or something. Yeah, or your immunity, right? I mean, if you, have, yeah. you know a big spell is coming, mm -hmm. right, yeah. you might be able to counteract it. Mm -hmm. And one of the other things I was thinking about as they were doing this conviction was also like, if resource management is going to be something they want to tag to every class is at some point you're going to have augmentation that's going to improve like the speed at which you gain this resource or the charges you can gain. I think what Sim, what you and I talked about last week was this feels very pally, like, you know, World of Warcraft, like where yeah. it's like builder spender. Yeah. I hope it's not that yeah simple. I, I, I yeah. do hope it's, a little more dynamic than oh i always have to watch this resource bar to make sure i have enough charges of conviction as opposed to like kind of doing it in the moment and saying okay now strategically i need to use this one right yeah to burn some conviction i feel mm -hmm. like it's more like meant to be like your like last hurrah sort of thing like your hero moment you're like i'm yeah. using my spells and my spells and like oh shoot they're really yeah. in trouble all right mega healing spell it chains across people like that's probably like you you if you're not sure if you watch like some anime like uh, uh one touch man or uh my hero academia where it's like uh your one for, like um plus ultra sort of things it's basically going beyond your limits and using more power your ulti yeah yeah i like yeah. that no, i like that too because like if i'm getting a, a gain conviction because i've been in the middle like of a combat scenario and i've been healing consistently and i've got the conviction but now i can use the conviction for that big heal you know, and I'm sort of saving it uh, while meanwhile, my convictions are are stacking up like that's cool. Right. But if it's like the builder spender, I'm like, nah. I, I get bored. I get real bored. Like I remember back in World of Warcraft, I remember having to keep Horn of Winter up all the time. I'm just like, dude. Yeah. Uh, there's, you know, there's, there's questions like um, like, is there, there going to be no sort of resources for other passes too? for example, right. um, obviously mana for wizards or uh tempo for bard uh rage for warrior mm. stamina for ranger like is, is there gonna be like these other resources for other classes as well 
I would so caution really against. Game. Yeah, I see where you're going. I would caution against overusing that. Yeah. Um, I just feel like it's going to make it's going to homogenize if there's a resource for everyone, um, yeah. at least in some form. Um, but something I was thinking about as well uh, related to this too is like you, I kind of hope that conviction is more like this tide turner. It's like I think of like the mm. controller um, in City of Heroes and there was one kind of controller that was a force multiplier and one power set particularly. And there was one power you could flip and it would pull a bunch of attack power, et cetera, from enemies and then both heal and give that attack power some portion of that attack power to your party i kind of like those kind of moments where you're like oh man we're we're really turning south here i need to do something and it's it and but i don't want it necessarily to always be that situational right yeah. i do feel like if you don't use it enough then it becomes kind of unnecessary so i do hope that it's more balanced where it's like yeah you might pop it in like that I mean, like smaller moment where you need something big but you're always kind of thinking hey i need to have like maybe a couple of charges of this just in case yeah um yeah um it would be uh, it'd be interesting to see like how they evolve that based on the feedback and yeah. what it's going to look like when we finally get into alpha 2 do you think um environmental effects will affect it as well like if you're on like a holy ground or something Possibly. Yeah, that was, I think they yeah. talked a, a little bit about that maybe. It's like maybe it was somewhere else that I saw it where like could the weather impact it? I kind of feel like yeah. certain places or certain times of day as well might be like a good way to synergize too. Um, or like even if you're on desecrated ground, right? Yeah. It might have some sort of like greater impact on maybe your spells in some way. Not anything game-breaking. No. Um, but still like, you know, you, you know, like, all right, yeah, this, the cleric is really going to be like our, our go-to for even like doing a little more of a hybrid gameplay, like some healing, but also contributing to the damage. And I did like that they showcased that a bit where it wasn't just like the cleric healing constantly. Yeah. We're seeing Steven fire off spells that were like red that you knew were damaged to enemies, which mm -hmm. was, I thought that was really cool that also this the spell like the different visuals as well i like the direction they're going at um as opposed to just being like the same thing and it just may be yeah. only slightly different i like that it was really different yeah one of the the things too is like I, I like the idea of like if it's consecrated ground then maybe as like a cleric or a holy priest or something like that i'm able to or a high priest i'm able to do like you know potentially more healing if it's like desecrated ground and necros might have advantages there and then yeah. i i mean i like those ideas i think that goes in line with their philosophy that they've expressed over and over as well i mean if you're gonna have if you're gonna talk whether impact on skills and or abilities passives or otherwise then I mean, yeah, why why not why not go full spectrum here so the other classes could potentially benefit from it too? Yeah. Just like can you imagine like reversing clerics out in the world and it's just like normal planes and you're like the plant like sand desert or whatever, right? It's like yeah. okay, cool, this is fine. But then you're seeing that like in the graveyard, like, oh no, we can't we can't go near them. Yeah, I'm not going it's by like that whole, church ruins or no, something. We're not going by that church. Same thing like you wouldn't approach a frost mage in the snow biome. Right. Yeah, if they're like baiting you that elements. way, yeah, if they're baiting you that way and you keep charging them, you're probably going to make some bad choices to keep following. Yeah. yeah, I like that. Good use of environment, too. So, I mean, they had a question yeah. around UE5 and, you know, will you be using Unreal Engine 5.1? I mean, it, it, it. let's go ahead and just say this, right? They're in Unreal Engine 5, any version of Unreal Engine they're going to be using because they'll have to update their, they're going to have to update the engine when they, when they do it's just a matter of whether or not they can utilize the tools from it which by the way mm, 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 those new tools are even are are bolstering their team's capability even further yep. it's just like dude talk about i mean just making it easier and easier for developers man I feel like uh, Ash is going to be like um, Unreal Fire's poster child at this point i, I kind of do too. yeah i agree with you there yeah, I think so as well. I wouldn't be surprised if there's some sort of agreement with them, like the two companies themselves. So, like later on, when it's released, and they'll be like, "This is what our engine can provide," 
and be like, look at this, look at that. Check out the shooter. Check out the survival game. Check out the MMORPG that's blowing up the freaking world right now. Check out movies. I mean, yeah, Unreal Engine's like, dude, <laughs> what can it do at this point? It's the real question. Yeah, and I can't imagine that even like anything that the team themselves are doing, like engineering wise, like we know just based on evidence, like yeah. how quickly they're able to react when there's like major issues that have come up in testing. So I I, I think I would be remiss if I didn't mention I'm betting Intrepid's engineers are really pu- helping them push the envelope too mm-hmm. and have it really be a viable, even more viable MMO engine in comparison and that's part of what they're doing in terms of information sharing i just like it was honestly the best decision they ever made to go with unreal to begin with and even more so as unreal continues to make such market improvements in their engine Mm. Mm. side note did you ever hear i I actually got a comment on this recently on youtube or whatever or my one of my you know Mm. uh, city of heroes or whatever there's that ship of heroes yeah, game I've or heard whatever, of it. right? Yeah, so, there's a few uh, out there. UE4, it's going to be made in UE4, and I'm just kind of looking at that. I'm going, why are y'all? Why don't you know? I, truth be told, that's been out there yeah. for many years. I mean, it was out there before I even heard of. Yeah, it's been developed for a while. Oh wow, that yeah. long? Yeah, it, it's oh my, it's, it's definitely a much smaller team. Yeah. Um, I've been following it a bit um because I was like I was kind of jonesing for that City of Heroes vibe. Yeah. And there's a few out there. I can't remember some of the others, but one of them was definitely Ship of Heroes. So yeah. But I don't know. I guess, you know, it just depends on what kind of staff you have to be able to convert. Cause I'm expecting, like even with Intrepid, right? It took them several months from go to to go from four to five. Right. I like what Arthur's is saying. Like, literally, it's like Unreal Engine. Like, it's like an operating system, right? You're going to get patches all the time. It's always going to get patched. It's whether they use the tools or not. Um, but there's going to be plenty of things that are going to just be, like, passively there, too, which you're, you know, going to benefit from. So we got a whole list of questions uh, to talk about here. And we didn't talk about a lot of them. We've already started digging into some. Um, we may not get through all of them today, but I think as we're talking about synergies, convictions, um, the, the you know, class showcase that we've been getting some of, I've been saying, you know, I personally don't expect a lot going into the end of the year. It's sort of normal for, for most games, actually, not just games of development or Ashes, but generally speaking, they people are time with family, you know, holidays. It's... It's normal. So uh, that was one of the things I was like also advocating. It's like, dude, don't expect a lot at the end of the year. They're busy. Um, although I got to say, no, I have not gotten our Steven shout out yet, our video yet. We haven't gotten that yet still. Yeah, I might need to hit up Margaret about that, huh? Because I want to share it with everybody. But I was thinking about that today. And I was like, you know, I haven't gotten that. It's been like about a month or so, huh? At about this point, yeah. I'm about to put a fire up underneath the trip and see what's up with that. But uh, how about this question here? There was one on a uh, big question in chat, actually. Will Steven announce dates for spot testing? That's the big question for Magisto. I, I don't I don't think so. I, I, I personally don't think so. Um, I think if there's going to be spot testing, it'll probably be one of those things where it's I don't, who knows, man. I don't expect that it's going to be one of those things you're going to have a ton of time to prepare for. It never really has been with them anyway. So more than likely, I'd say it's probably going to be like you get a ping maybe a day or two at a time if you're in the Discord and you've got access, more than likely. But that's just my it's my two cents on it. I know the last time they did some sort of poll to, yeah. like, would you join this if it was on this right. date? Yeah, and it's even? roughly like yeah. two weeks to a month, I think it was. Yeah, like was there was a, emails that went out. That so was yeah, Alpha I mean, one. I ex- yeah, Alpha One mm-hmm. spot testing. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm not expecting that they're going to do anything before the end of the year. That's just no. that just doesn't feel likely at all. Maybe something early next year, something in Q1 for spot testing, and then um, just kind of now that where we are, 
I'm I'm less confident there's going to be full blown testing in Q1. Yeah. yeah, I don't know why they'd do like all that. Like if they were doing testing, it would be like hands on deck sort of thing, and that's coming up to Christmas. Yeah. Like I don't think they're going to be. They want to start like not winding down, but sort of like calm down a bit, so everyone can like go home, have like go spend time with family, and then come back in January and like hit it, kick it off again. I yeah. Feel like January, February, they might do something like end of mm-hmm. January, end of February. If you want my February. speculation, I'd say I feel that probably like February, March spot testing feels feels pretty likely. That's what yes, I would. Yeah. yeah. I feel like that's also going to give Intrepid enough time to work on fixes for whatever they might need to do before quarter two to, and remember my, my quarter two uh, speculation is probably into quarter two. So I'd, I'd say right around like the bridge of summer um, is what I'm thinking. So they did February, March. That's pretty, pretty good chunk of time to, to work yeah. on resolutions before maybe a potential alpha two launch to get, get everybody in there. Just my two cents, though, you know, just basing it off of like their behavior. And that's what I work off of. Um, Talking about the staggering effects that they were. I mean, we didn't talk about that in detail. I'm curious. I'll I'll go ahead and share this question here. Right. And I'm curious what you all think about the answer. It's a it's a long answer. So I'm going to take a deep breath, try to get through this one. But the the question was, can you elaborate on the staggering interactions? So. This was a prepared question for the team, right? This was one they they prepared to answer after showcasing. So they said staggering is a type of status condition that can be applied to certain skills, right? So expect with me saying that, that it's going to be different classes are going to be able to put the staggering effect on something. The type of synergy system they're going for is that certain archetypes and class kits will have access to a number of uh, first tier status conditions. And those types of status conditions are generally uh, those conditions that can be applied across a host of skills and a number of different archetypes and class kits. They can progress when synergized with other types of status effects and abilities to tier two status effects. Okay, so... Before I go through the rest, multiple interactions, and you can upgrade that status effect based on those synergies. All right. For example, one of the abilities that a cleric has at level uh, level one, two, five, that's not right, 25, Chains of Restraints, which ticks for damage in an area as well as applies a staggered effect. However, if the target was already subjected to the staggered condition, then it gets promoted to the stun condition. The difference between staggered and stunned are that the staggered state, the creature may not use abilities. They can use basic attack functions and use spells. They have access to spells, but their physical abilities will be muted and inaccessible during the staggered effect. The stun condition is a more amplified condition where you cannot take any actions. So now my questions to you all are, what do you think about this and what are some thoughts around how synergies could work? Concerns? Feel free to bounce around on that one. Um, I guess for me, it's probably going to all be about testing and balancing, but the theory behind it, I think is solid. One of the things that um, I think is missing from games nowadays, I've seen it in other games, like early on, like MMOs, where, where you've had like if multiple, like City of Heroes did that, where if, you had multiple people doing a similar effect, then at some point you'd get enough stacks and it would hit. Like even like boss type mobs would right. would get it, but it was a much more of a build up thing. Um, but I do feel like it's important to have all these different effects as part of everyone's repertoire because then that also helps you in terms of like inclusivity of mm. different types of characters. So you know hey, I'm I'm going to always want this type of character because they synergize with everyone else in the party. And especially when you get into, like, you know, your your um, team size being eight, I think that that also helps with, like, interaction. I just think this is, this is just another thing that they're doing to really um, promote, like, teamwork. And I think it's also, in my opinion, a good gateway to make encounters tougher and I don't want to say like require it, but encourage you to 
find those like synergy moments so that you can say, okay, you know, Sim, pop your block, you know, you know, Daedalus, do your whatever, what song that would potentially have an effect that interacts with that block or something, right? So you have like that level of synergy and it also keeps everyone engaged which is one thing that I would say I did not like about like some of the World of Warcraft encounters. It was kind of lopsided to certain type of classes and different boss fights. So their classes were almost not relevant mm -hmm. um, in those encounters. Um, or at least you, you kind of needed a class at the expense of another class. Whereas I feel like this is possibly, right? I haven't seen like the, the product even in like a final form. But I do like the theory behind it. Whereas you're now you've got a bunch of interactions ac mm -hmm. across the archetypes. It's going to make it much more group friendly to be able to do that. And it's also going to give you an opportunity to be a lot more flexible in your encounter. So it's not just like a tank and spank, you're like 24 seven, or you don't have just gimmicky mechanics for certain bosses. You kind of got that interplay in a variety of encounters. Yeah, like I think this is the, them trying to trying to solve the issue of people being able to use stun abilities constantly instead of doing stun instantly. It's more of a gradual build up, and so the person who's going to get uh, staggered or stunned, they can see what they're trying to do and try and mitigate it before it happens. So it's not like a instant stun. Um, my main concern is I'm hoping that there isn't a way for some certain classes to use one ability and then second ability to do this by themselves. I'd hope it's more of a teamwork based thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because I do, I do like the idea of you communicating with other people. Use say, okay, I'm using uh, spell slot B. Can you please use your um, your shield bash ability to trigger a stun or knock them on his feet? Right. Um, yeah. Right. Like Cheryl said. Yeah. Um, but oh, where has I got this? Um, but yeah, I do. I do like this. It very much reminds me of Divinity: Ritual Sin. Oh, um, nice reference. Where, like, if, if you um, use like a water spell on someone and then you electrify them, mm. they now have the shocked effect. Um, but so using the same sort of elements, I'm hoping there's like element sort of um, uh, statuses as well, like shocked, um, slowed, um, burning. Like I'm hoping there's these other sort of effects you can do on people as well. Like if you constantly just bombard people with fire spell, fire spell, or if you give them like a put them on a weakened state, and then so if you hit them with a toxic orb or something, he could be just poisoned for a little bit. But if you put him in a weakened state from like a cleric and then poison him, he's now uh, got toxic or like he's more like a more powerful version of poison that lasts mm -hmm. longer and does more damage. I'm hoping this, that's like this is what those are the levels I'm seeing these status effects, and I'm just hoping it's not just a simple uh, one plus one equals two. It might, could be a, a one plus one or one plus two or one plus three. It was like these different elements or different statuses. So it's not just a stagger, stagger equals stun. It could be a stagger, shock equals a uh, cripple or something. Like, I'm hoping that like you can do combine stagger with not just one ability but like multiple. So it could be like A and B equals C or A and C equals D. Yeah. You, know, you know what I'm saying? Like it's not just a simple yep. um, one plus one. Yeah, I like that. I mean, I agree yeah. too. I mean, they, they're going to have diminishing returns on things. You're not going to have stun locking happening. I think this yeah. is a good way to really try to like, you know, min-max your group comp. I mean, I think in arenas, this is going to be super important. Where are you going to say data list? Well, I was thinking too, like I like the fact that you have like a stagger and a stun yeah because the stagger is like very much like a physical lockout versus the stun being like everything i'm wondering as well is there a counterpart for silence too which would mm -hmm. lock out magic so just kind of seeing that um as well i think is good because it's mm -hmm. it's it's layers of different types of effects so again there's it feels like again on paper that it's more strategic to say okay well mm. we probably want to stagger this mob then stun them or we want to silence this mob and then you know stun them for example i mean there's 
probably others like you know obviously snare and shocked and elemental effects i would really like that too i think i've seen like fire ice effects have an interplay but i hadn't really thought of like fire and toxic or um you know ice and toxic or something like that so even that might be good too like having like an ice and a toxic spell be like a knockdown or something Mm -hmm. um it's possible but I, i think that that they if they can really like clearly define that interaction and and to um armichelle's point not it not it have it not be too simple i think that's good too i don't want it to be like so complex that you need like a decoder ring to figure it out but still just having something where there's a good interplay with a number of abilities um that they could you know potentially like tweak fairly easily so that it doesn't become overpowered and i do think that the diminishing returns is something that i'm continuing to be encouraged by the fact that they're like no we don't want to do this it's not fun i know and again even and i'm even talking about like um on the when, when it's not happening to you when it's happening to mobs you know maybe yeah. there's like some like early on hey this is really cool i can lock down all these mobs and they're like helpless but at some point it gets too easy and you're like really you know i want i want to be able to be strategic with that like ulti knockdown or ulti stun so that that way you know it's not something that we just always do every time it becomes repeatable and it becomes boring so I was just thinking then. So do do you think uh, so do, in the live stream was there like multiple levels of stagger? Like did they do stagger, stagger, stagger? Like was it like level one, level two, level three staggers, or was it? I didn't was see it that. Like, I didn't notice. Or was it just one blanket. I think it was just one, and then they stunned. But I I I could be wrong. I need to double check. I'd have to double check it myself to. Yeah, I thought it sure. was like apply the stagger, then apply the stun. At least yeah. at this this iteration. Okay. Yeah, same. It's like. I was just thinking about Div again, and I realized that they also had resistances as well. So, like, you would be resistant up to, like, I think it's called willpower or something, and that would mm-hmm. allow you to resist a certain level of those daggers. So, if you had, like, let's say you've got, like, uh, heavy boots or something, it might resist, like, one or two staggers, but after the first stagger, then, then you start feeling it. So, I'm hoping they've got do that sort of thing, like, with bosses as well. So, you, mm-hmm. you have to, like, stagger it, like, maybe... 15 times or something before actually you can stagger them because it's, it's sort of annoying me mm-hmm. uh, bosses just uh, uh just can ignore all status effects yeah. i would like it to yeah. work but not but have to work for it like if you want to be able to stagger a boss um, in a dungeon or something i'd hope that you if you got like five people just trying to stagger it you'll stagger it eventually but not for long it's that's enough to cancel out one of those like moves or something yeah like I'm it hoping, could be brief yeah i'm not talking like as, as you can stun the boss, right? I'm talking like yeah. a brief inter- iteration where you can interrupt the spell that's about to cast. Just to inhibit it, the boss, yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be good good use of mechanics and coordination too, I feel like. Especially since you can interrupt bosses sometimes in fights, so it's not like outside the norm, no. you know, to interrupt. You may not interrupt everything, but, you know, there's plenty of boss fights out there in MMORPGs where you can interrupt certain boss skills, you, you know? have to, right? Yeah. You win the pan counter. Right, exactly. Oh, and that could be the... What well, Dayla's saying too, with the mobs being like, uh, just like constantly stun locking, but like, oh, cool, this yes. is real easy. What if there's uh, like some mobs have titles? So yeah. like it might be robust um, skinwalker instead of just normal skinwalker. And right. uh, he's he's more resilient to that effect. And you won't find out that he's robust until you actually attack him the first time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because, like, like you, you might not see it until after you attack him. He's like, He's robust or he's agile or swift or you know you know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. It's like a like a sil like 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 called silver mobs or something in World of Warcraft. Like there's some yeah, there was like rare rare yeah. mobs and then yeah, they had like legendary or something, something like that. Let's add like uh variety to the mobs, but once again, like we're very early iteration of like character creation, let alone uh not character creation, but like the class archetype not class yeah class uh sets right now so like yeah and and there was like the one of the follow-up questions was like talking about status ability stacking 
And they said that basically what it looks like they're going for is they've got, well, there's unique rules for stacking based on the types of stats conditions. So you might have an event where instead of it stacking, you might just increase the longevity of it as opposed to actually stacking like, you know, a greater number of, uh, of that. You know, like yeah. if you got a debuff instead of doing, you know, a higher number of like, let's say it's a dot, right? And it's doing damage over yeah. time. Instead of increasing the damage of the dot, you might just actually have, which is every time it ticks, if you don't know, uh, people yeah. that are listening. Um, instead of it being like how much it ticks over time, it could just be like, well, it doesn't change that, but it increases like how long that's going to be there for how long it'll be doing it. So that's pretty cool. Um, but I like that there was a real big focus from Steven on diminishing returns. Um, yeah. you know, in certain conditions are going to share a uh, certain dimension return grouping. So that's obviously characters can't be completely locked out of it. So it sounds like there's going to be a usefulness, but depending on what you're using, it could determine like, um, just overall, like how, um, I guess lucrative that's going to be in a fight. So maybe you have to kind of really uh, be mindful of what you're choosing to do. Um, yeah, so the that's what I was talking about before, right? Yeah. So, like, if you're using the same spell, you're not mm -hmm. going to be able to do more poison damage than you were the first time you gave him poison damage. But, like, you're yeah. going to do more dot, like, more dot damage, just increasing the time. But if you're a, another character that can mm -hmm. uh, re reduce his resistance to that, that will increase the damage. So that way you can synergize. That's that's the sort mm -hmm. of uh, team play I was talking about. Yeah, and, I, and I'm totally down with that, too, because between that and, like, situational awareness not having add-ons, having to be aware of like the, you know, the telegraphs and fights or the templates that are like those things to me are important. Like when you, you have a cross between that and boss fights and the coordination of a team, like to me, that's good gameplay. That's good. That's a really good focus on uh group cohesion. And like the, the group that's got, you know, is more has higher level of cohesion. They're going to like potentially do a lot better in a raid. Versus the ones that are like not calling things out, aren't well as well coordinated. And, you know, they're just thinking, oh, well, I can just like spam stun mobs, no, you know, line of sight, spam stun, nuke them down and not have to worry about mechanics. Like to me, I mean, I know it's tedious, but if I've got like a raid lockout once a week, you know, and I'm going to go in there a couple of days, like I'm going to be mindful of clearing those, those mobs. I'm going to, you know polymorph one and stun one or trap one and and you know have a call kill order on on what you're taking down first and in order of like the more severe mob in the in the pad or the group that's you know patrolling around so you know to me that's that to me that's good that's fun you know when you when you're even approaching a boss and you're coordinated well it just feels rewarding to me to go through and push through the groups and you're like oh awesome nobody we didn't wipe here Nobody got killed here because we did our job. Um, so, you know, from the mobs all the way up to the boss, I think those types of gameplay loops for me are just really rewarding. Um, I like this, though, when they said, you know, can you can you cast the movement or do you need to stand still? It said most abilities can be cast while moving, but some are going to require you to not. Right. So I'm thinking longer casts, right, or slow your movement during a cast, which I'm a big fan of that. I don't mind that um, because if you're in the middle of a cast, there's certain actions you're not going to be able to take, right? That's going to break it. Like, even if you're going, oh, it's not going to make me stop, but I can move, but I'm moving slower. Well, that now, if there's like something that's about to hit me and get placed underneath me, like I've still got a choice to make. And also, if I've got a jump or something, I'm, I'm going to break it, right? Most of the time, unless that's something they include in with the slow. So, you know, you still got, you still got like a cost benefit analysis there. Um, yeah. So I don't really have like an issue with that. I don't really have an issue with you being rooted. I don't really have an issue with you being slowed as long as there's like, you know, a cost benefit analysis there. If something happens, I'm either going to need to stop casting or take it to the face. And I hope I'm prepared. Do you, do you think you can do those standstill spells while mounted? Probably not. I don't expect I wouldn't think so. I, I kind of hope no, um, personally, uh, just because I'm not a big fan of casting even speed skills when you're yeah. on your mount. Um, I feel like in uh, the Elder Scrolls Online, there's a really good example of like, I mean, to be fair, there's skills that you you cast that are for your mount, but it's like for your mount. But I yeah. just don't, I don't know. It just feels kind of weird. 
casting spells when mounted. So but don't they, don't they have the um, multi mount for the raids and stuff? Wouldn't they be able to fire off that? Oh man, that's a good. I mean, you got to think too. Like every mount's gonna have skill sets, so yeah, right. Because like, yeah, I don't know. One of the things that I did in Rust, right, is because there's a comp, there's a bow, uh, there's an all bow that you make, but then there's a compound bow, mm -hmm. and basically you need to stand still, pull it back, and it does a full charge. But what you can do is ride a horse, and so that way you're still standing still technically, but you can move around on the horse mm -hmm. while full launching the um the boat, which I normally do quite a lot. Yeah, because like if you move, what happens is it reduces the um the amount of damage you're doing. Like right. there's a little bar that comes up. Um, yeah. So that's that's why my question popped up because like that's why I do in Rust. So, right. and there's already a, a mounted like a mounted combat uh, like elephant or whatever it was where it's like four people can sit on it and shoot from. So that's why I was wondering if they can do it from a normal mount as well. Yeah, you know why that's. I good. hope not. Yeah, but. so I I hope not too. And in certain games, like look from a realistic perspective, that would mm. be pretty cool to be like, ah, I'm I'm spell chucking on a mount. I mean, you could do that in some fantasy worlds, right? That's cool. It would be fun. I'd be really immersed in it. But then I'm like, yeah, we can't do that though, because then you're gonna get the guy that's gonna be like, you're gonna get on group mount. You have three people up there. They're all gonna be shooting at some random person who can't even mount up they're gonna be like a lol they're gonna be like rolling around them just like bombarding them kiting them around on a mount destroying them yeah all day I, long. I feel like it might be like it's like the same thing like that guy um, <laughs> like it would be easier to shoot off an elephant than it is a a horse right because a horse yeah. is like galloping whereas an elephant's more steady so maybe it's like maybe a stability thing and depending like if you're on a turtle it might be easier than on a uh that lizard the giant iguana thing yeah okay maybe so it's an like accuracy this. bonus or uh what do you call it uh, Debuff, you know, yeah. penalty or something like mm. that yeah depending on what sort of mount you're using mm. i don't know i mean i'm i'm not really keen on having mount combat i mean unless it's simplistic uh i just yeah. i don't know i feel like there's too many ways to game the system if it's not yeah. that way we already get some too right because of your yeah, you get some mount skills like for speed and whatnot yeah yeah so you i'm sure things. yeah i'm sure there's some strategy to it like i'd like to see like more mount skills on what you could potentially breed with husband be cool. but i wouldn't necessarily think like you can do anything other than maybe basic attacks with a mount yeah, Actually, I wouldn't expect it. I just, I just thought of the fix. It's because you're holding the reins of it. So you're holding the reins of it. You're using the the mount's abilities, not. But the, so the person driving the the multi mount can't shoot, but the people who aren't riding the mount, like like controlling the mount, can shoot because they're not they've got hands free. That's probably the best way to think of it. Yeah, I would still say like regardless of the mount, you need to have some sort of penalty for doing for the mount because you'll then you'll yeah you won't totally discourage it but it'll be less likely of a scenario where people are op like on a two or three person mount that you know yeah. laying waste i mean i would just i'd be that guy i'm not gonna lie I mean, yeah i not to say that it wouldn't be fun yeah but i just think just like in the interest of like balancing the encounters i would probably shy away from that or at least it it'd be more situational yeah uh, like maybe so like sad. underwater mounts in an underwater dungeon yeah okay i get it i would like that but anything else mm, i don't know i guess i'd have to see it in practice to make a final judgment call man you would talk about the level of like you know the level of like pain and suffering by the person getting griefed by somebody on a mount <laughs> it's horrible i mean i'm not it's horrible it's not funny actually it's just it's Look, that's not what you think. I'm going to read a question from chat, okay? Uh, question. Do you think the synergy system will tie into those raid siege level spells? They mentioned six to eight person casting. The same thing to greater effect. What if you would need multiple raid level spells to synergize in order to stun a large boss? So I think we don't know exactly what we're getting in that regard. But the one thing that I know we can say we can count on for sure is siege summons from summoners. That we know we're going to get. Uh, the rest of it is, I mean, it's been hinted at, but it's pretty much like 
Steven's like, well, this would be cool. And you're like, all right, that's cool, Steven. Be careful about that, though, because you're not really sure if you're going to do this. And that would be sort of like a potential scope creep situation. Too. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I like the idea of multiple people contributing to a greater spell or casting something, even if we're just talking about summoners with their behemoths to use during sieges. Um, but I don't know. I don't know if you all have thoughts about that question. Meatloaf uh, had in chat there. Uh, yeah, I guess I would, again, I'd have to see it in testing and like what it mm. would take is that I expect like with raid level siege level, you might have a little more time to like get those summons in. I don't know if that's going to necessarily mm. have like, some sort of announcement in chat like you know team a is you know summoning a golem or what have you um i know i guess i just have to see how that would be balanced yeah because i just feel like those longer summons are, or so those bigger summons are going to take longer to do mm -hmm. maybe like a minute or two to really ramp them up and so i don't know how effective they would be in a raid situation when potentially i would expect as dynamic as they're making some of the encounters now you're not necessarily going to want to sit still for an extended period of time yeah i feel like um if those group spells should have some sort of visual or audio cue for example like you said about the golem you might hear like a a roar or a cry or a, a slow rumble and you, you might be able to see like a group of people in the area and you might for example even like wizards right they're going to cast like a giant fireball yeah that's slowly producing like a giant fireball in the middle of them and it takes a minute and you can slowly see it growing so that way people can see okay we need to take them out now before they eat before they unleash it either that or the golem rising from the ground like those freaking zombies i'm sorry yeah. but that was like one thing and i was like yeah that that's was totally the right touch I like As it. opposed to just being there, it's like yep. you walk into an area and all of a sudden they're coming out the ground. That well, was actually mm -hmm. a really nice moment in the stream. I thought with the rock creatures back during the fighter weapon master mm -hmm. preview with the uh, action combat they were showing off. I like that. Mm -hmm. I like it. I mean, it, when you play the game eventually, you'll long enough, you'll eventually know like where these things are probably going to happen and like what mm -hmm. you see that are going to turn or into something. You. Yeah, well, I mean, more like minor level stuff, like the little rock dudes or something. Yeah, but the little rock dudes, yeah. You might see, okay, that might be one of them. Or yeah, but like anything that's Node-related and a Node's developing, there's a there's a big... E even those things in a Node that's developing would be could potentially be like, you just don't know, right? Because maybe right. something's only there at like rank three Node versus you know like the maybe those zombies that pop up only are awake when you're in a rank three node right it's only been they've only been disturbed enough versus yeah so that's an interesting idea mm, okay I, I like i would like the idea of like um not not mimics exactly but those rock creatures being protect, like sleeping and pretending to be a node and you're hitting it and then all of a sudden it, turns, it wakes up and starts attacking you oh god like so, same thing like trees being yeah, same like like the trees being a treant when you're starting to cut it down. It's like, <laughs> hang on, that hurts, and it turns around and smacks you. Yeah, I like so that. Farmers gotta be careful. That would be cool. That would be cool. Or the little mushrooms with the booty, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. You're picking up the mushrooms, you know? and all of a sudden it just like scares you away. By <laughs> <laughs> How funny if you're in like an area with the mushrooms and you're going and you're like trying to pick one or whatever, right? And instead of <laughs> instead of instead of the uh, you know you farming it you, like you it didn't wake it up and they start twerking because they actually like getting picked but then like you know you know what i'm saying it's kind of fun yeah you know and I, then I it's like ah, i don't want to example in any way shape, or form. <laughs> i don't want to be picking something out of somebody's booty because that's just me it's a you know they're like they're like oh yeah you're like oh what what oh i'm not i'm done here all right bye or they attack you yeah <laughs> I'll be more concerned about mandrakes, man. Only no, no, shrooms. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a cool. Or yeah, that's a good idea too. Like mandrakes, like you're going and you're picking like an herb, and a mandrake pops up, and then it like starts screaming and like disorients you. You know, and you're like, oh, and, then, and you get stun locked by a mandrake. What? And then they will start popping up because they're all fucking they're all mandrakes. Yeah. 
Someone smacked it with a naughty stick or something. I didn't do anything. I'm just not, I didn't do it. There was nothing naughty going on there. What? A fun guy can like getting scratched or picked. It doesn't have to be anything dirty. All right. So twerking can just be a dance. It can just be expression. Rolls eyes. <laughs> um, I feel like twerking is almost a main call at this point. <laughs> Uh, everybody, why is everybody always picking on me? Okay, can you heal a mob? No. Good answer. I mean, that's the long and short of it, right? Although, oh which this is interesting because it said, no, you cannot heal enemy mobs because there is not or is not a relevant use case with the design mechanics since griefing other players, which would likely be the case of healing enemy mobs, is not intending or intended in Ashes. What are you, what is going on? What are you laughing about? Uh, it's, it's like the idea of being a cleric and just walking around and seeing someone like farming mobs and you're just like, he's constantly healing the mob. To to All right. <laughs> I'm not going to agree. I'm not good. It's like, I didn't attack you. I'm not getting corruption. I'm just going to heal the mob that you're, that you're fighting. So it just eventually beats you down or you got to run away. And I'm like, la, 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 la. You're like, yeah. It's, like, it's almost like know. Ash's Pokemon at that point. You're just like, I choose you, Skinwalker. Go after him. I mean, I don't really know what to say about that. I mean, I can't. You know, people are just trying to like say that I'm like being gross or being like whatever. I'm just, I'm just an interesting idea. You know, innocent, interesting idea. It's all this. There's nothing. Well, at this, you know, you're letting the color of the background get to you, and it's also just the color red. It's just, it's soothing to me. It's not bright and blaring and hurt my eyes. You know. Don't leave it, leave it there. Y'all need, need to y'all need to elaborate on that. Okay. Cool. Awesome. Okay. The next question was, will you be able to hear yourself as other archetypes like a paladin? And I love that because w this question and answer made I was like the first, it was one of the steps into feeling happy on the inside as a as hopeful for a paladin, which is yes, it depends on the secondary class selection. No one will fill the primary role of a healer, but there will be secondary class options which will provide you with some level of sustainability and restoration. Most of that will be centralized to yourself, especially in the case of a paladin. Yeah, baby. All right, that's all I got for that one. I'm just happy about it. Any other thoughts, gentlemen, on that one? Daedalus, yay. No, I, I actually, I, I do like the fact that there won't be like, I think one of the things that really was a off-putting for like games like Guild Wars 2 mm -hmm. is it was kind of that everyone can do everything kind of thing. So it made your class choice almost irrelevant, um, which I think, again, right, my major point with any, like even if it's a class that I don't play, right, really, or don't have any interest in playing, I want all classes to be relevant. Yeah. Then you just get to a point at which, Absolutely. you know, you, you, then you, then you start networking with people. I'm like, Oh, Hey, this guy's are like a really great summoner or great yeah. bard or what have you, right. You're, you're kind of expanding your horizon a bit. And even more so with having the secondary to say, Hey, I, you know, we really need to have like, I don't know, um, a cultist in our group, for example. You know, I mean, it's it's that kind of thing that I think yeah. is really important. You know what I thought about? Like, because you're going to be a bard, right, Daedalus? So more than likely. Potentially, yeah. One of my 20 right? alts is a bard. And we know yeah. that the bards and ashes, you know, were, they're not just about songs. It's also about, like, I mean, I even heard a little bit about dance in there. So, like, you're really going to want Daedalus in your group. He's a master of dance. You just can't get enough of him twerking in your raid. <laughs> If you try to harvest <laughs> my ass, I'm coming after you, boy. <laughs> and it's not going to be with a loot. <laughs> Handful of, of light forge baby powder? What? Oh, my gosh. Exactly. Exactly. It's it's right there. I may be a bar, but I still carry baby powder. It's like yeah. essential. <laughs> oh, man, dude. Um, yeah, I was really happy about the Paladin uh, reference there for, for the being able to hear yourself. Because to me, that's just like... I mean, it, it's to me as big of a deal as like blessings and things like that. And I'm, I'm hoping that we get some alignment to, uh, what, what's going on. I'm so sorry, Ash and Harold. I'll be right there with you on that. Cheryl, you, you just not for a minute. Just let Daedalus get, get his fair share here. 
you know no nope. no god nope. damn. okay Not okay happen. all right paladin <laughs> things right and pal the paladins paladins that can be have red by the way i'm just saying right there's red red's good it's not corruption okay <clears throat> speaking of uh bards this one was a nice reference to the bard will there be special area buffs you can use that will last longer periods of time they reference the bard here the bard archetype has not been shown but it along with others will have other buffs i like the reference there has not been shown but we have it they have yeah. only shown up at to level 15 but when you get to level 50 you can have at least 20 different buffs thoughts on that one I do like that quite a bit. A lot of options. Yeah. Very swole. Very swole indeed. Very swole indeed. <laughs> yeah. Them yeah, now though. it's making me curious though. 20 different buffs. What what you, what all are you buffing, man? I'm I mean, I'm thinking it, possible, right? Is what I'm thinking. Because God, I hope that's not at the same time. Yeah. Once yeah. again, is that is that I'm like a cap of raid. 20 buffs? Or is it like there's only 20 buffs that I've got so far. That's, that's a great question. He said, uh, but when you get to level 50, you can have at least 20 different buffs. So I'm thinking maybe well, at the, least. Yeah. I'm wondering if he's rep if he's referencing the bard and this is a hint at augmentation. Potentially, or just like that end game pool of what you'll have. It's a good question. I don't know what's going on. Uh, I'm just going to say no, you, Frozen. What is everybody coming at me today? This is my appeal to all of you that actually appreciate me as a human who does this podcast. Please show up on Sundays and and uh, support your friendly light bringer, Paladin Friend, some more. Okay, cool. Thanks. I need more darker look with. What? <laughs> um, yeah, so that's an interesting one. I, I think I'd like to explore. I, I can see a, a 20 potential buffs, meaning... 20 variations or more and that would make sense to me to see to in in that context um i could see up to 20 buffs in like a 40 in a 40 person raid group or something maybe that a party could have but I, i'm i'm thinking maybe that was like a bard specific thing there yeah that's what's up um oh i was getting a reference i'll have to check that out frozen um okay continuing forward is there a, chi a shield charge attack? Well, Stephen didn't actually answer that question, but we know that there's charge attacks, right? It, he went on talking about stamina. He talked about an active design discussion around dodging and blocking using separate energy mechanic. So this is the thing I want to I want to take that. And even though he didn't ans answer that question specifically, uh, this referenced something else that was kind of popping up in the community. And I'm curious about your thoughts on this one, Armored Cell, since you weren't here last week. The idea of active blocking. Where do you stand on that if it were to be in Ashes? Uh, on the spot. I don't actually mind it, but the thing is, like, if, if you're going to have an active blocking, you're going to need a resource to manage it, otherwise people are just going to keep spamming it. That's that's the only thing, and and once you add another resource, it's another yeah. thing you have to manage. Yeah, and you've already got weapon attacks too, and I like, I don't mind that. I just don't think it's I don't think it's the game. This is the game for it. No. Yeah. It's not. Um. Yeah. You know, maybe. For like, I know in uh, Pathfinder D and D, you can have like um different fighting styles for fighters. It can give you like certain abilities for like um, yes. better chances of blocking and stuff. Like maybe because like this is based off Pathfinder, so that's why I'm sort of going off down that route. Fair. Um so maybe you might be able to get different uh passes to have better block mm -hmm. or maybe. But um by active blocking I don't really see that as a because uh, like I want if you don't have a resource, I'm gonna be spamming it. I tell you what, I'm gonna be I'm going to be left clicking and then I'm going to be spamming right click. I'm going to be constantly attacking. Right. But if if there's a resource, then it's going to be feeling like I've got now I've got conviction. I've got yeah. ammo on my shield. I've got, mm -hmm. you know, it's just, yep. it's going That's to be a bit man. too much. Yeah. So I'm I, feel, totally... I feel like it's more active dodging rather than active blocking. Yeah. And even but active even dodging. That started. is. So like a resource. So I, I kind of feel like yeah. maybe a way in, and I don't want to necessarily reopen this can of worms because I know some people weren't really a fan of the whole stamina system that they had early on. 
but I do feel like you need to have like some sort of stamina system or charge system that is common for like all of these maybe more active things like dodge, like block, potentially parry. I don't know. Parry might be a, maybe something you could incorporate in other abilities. But I do feel like if they mm -hmm. want to go that route, which I'm honestly leaning on the fence, I'm like, I'm not, I'm ambivalent about a active blocking. Yeah. Um, but if I was like gun to my head, I had to pick a choice, I would not do it. I yeah. just, I mean, I just have not really seen like a good value for that. I would rather it just be like, you know, dodging as opposed to blocking. It just feels like it's, in my opinion, just a lot more versatile. Um, yeah. yeah mark my words man i'm telling you i know they're working on their own server solutions and all that sort of stuff but mark my words on this man if they were to do it and get into a large scale fight i'm telling you performance for people is gonna be shitty yeah that's my can I, can belief can i clarify what i mean sure. by dodging i mean i don't mean like a skip i don't mean like you're just following right click to dodge or using a dodge ability i'm talking more like you know the, the jump skill for the um for the archer I was talking more like being able to use that directionally and using that to jump out of the way. So using your skills, like you have got a, a skill that has movement in the skill and you can use that as a dodge. Mm. So if you're too close to enemy and you need to back up, you can use that to get away from it. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not really talking about a yeah, system where right. you're using shift to dash out of the way. Yeah, yeah. No, I totally agree with you on that, man. That's that's where I'm at too. I think I think the I think the idea of the ranks for different skills is like the is the place to go. You know what I mean? Like incorporate it in as a rank for a certain skill. You know, you know do something like that, or you get an additional function to it or something. I mean, you can Ooh. have blink already for like a mage. So, you yeah. know, I mean, Mary talked about things like roll dodging, for example, being related to like I don't know, rogue or a ranger or something, where it would make sense, and it wouldn't make as much sense for like I don't know, a tank or a cleric or something or a mage for that matter some someone who doesn't really like you know they're not really like a physical class inherently um it might even just be a, a roll roll dodge it could be a roll dodge and as he's coming back up he's flinging some yeah uh, knives or something you know like so it's still an attack yeah but it's doing less damage because it's mainly a movement yeah like yeah. your jump so, over with the ranger. yeah i was literally gonna yep. say the same thing yeah that the the thing that the ranger did Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. That would totally make sense because then you're, it's, you know, bound to a skill essentially. And then it's like part of your class kit. Like that stuff, I guess. That's totally cool. Yeah. Cause then you could use an ability for mobility too. So, yes. Which makes total sense to me. Um, this was fun. And this is sort of the uh, namesake of today's show. But this I loved. I, I love this. Are some abilities going to have voice abilities or voice? dialogue when when casting he said there's a desire some of the casting abilities will have incantations that are done but they're not implemented yet oh i love that you're gonna hear like your character actually saying something that's awesome right considering you're not getting really voice acting like give me some of that flavor i'm down yeah, yeah. i wonder what the i wonder what the town i would sound like what no we don't oh, want that no, <laughs> no the, the the uh the bad memories are coming back oh now. i'm sorry i'm sorry dude uh murlocs <laughs> damn dark overlord stuff and things that's happening not right now no that is a friend with nature murlocs uh, man from world of warcraft when, when, whenever i played hearthstone my, my, my murlocs are fun, funny I just had a Merlock deck and they just swapped you. Oh my god, they just like zerging you, right? Yeah, that's funny. Yeah. It's like you'd kill them and then you'd get like, I can't remember what it was, but there was one of a Merlock that just funny. bring them back from the grave and back to the field. It was, it was great. Hadouken. Yeah, exactly. Dude, that's so funny. Um, there was a question about day and night cycle being tied to server time. I mean, obviously that's the thing, but I'm curious how they're going to still kind of don't know how I feel about their cycle so far something we got to see it's really tough for me to chime in on a lot of that um yeah as much as you hate it you instantly recognize it it's true yeah things like that in an mmo man they give it they give it that like a soul you know what i mean the, when you have like those specific things you just you know what it looks like what their dialogue is what their sounds are it's like the peons and the the orc peons and 
World of Warcraft, right? You click on it, it's like, zug, zug. You're not that kind of orc. What are you doing? Leave me alone, right? Or whatever, those things. Are we going on your um, orc molestation uh, no, issue again? See, you, that's dark. That's Daddy Day Day dark. Or Daddy no, Day Day You're the one that dark. talks about stop touching me there. No, okay, I was, I was talking saying. about a fungus who might like some... Uh, Interaction with orcs. No, dude, that's all. The we're, we're not judging you. It's okay. <laughs> going into the weird places yeah, this, is, this is a safe space. No. This is a safe space. <laughs> not for the fun guy or the orcs right now. Apparently, they're good. Never mind. All right, this wasn't me. Look, where's the where's the reprimand in chat for Daedalus? Nobody. You all. It's a conspiracy. I tell you. <laughs> it's it's just because he's been influenced for so long by uh, someone else in the group. Yes. So he's a, he's a victim in this. Are you, are you accepting responsibility for this? Uh, me? No, I'm, no, I'm, I'm, not new. Me. I'm new. No, you're not I, that new. You're not new on the show, I, maybe, I, but you're not that new even on the show. Come on. You you brought me here. This is, <laughs> you attract these me sort of people. You attract me. You attract this. I feel, this, I, this. I feel held hostage right there on your desk right now. I don't even know what's going on. I've never been in a situation where I've looked into a camera or anything else and seen a picture of myself staring back at me before with a cigar in my hand, apparently. Yeah. Well, he's got to spend loot somehow. He's 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 very <laughs> lucky. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god! Let's look at Sim like guest star in Mad Men because I'm kind of getting that vibe. <laughs> cigar, white shirt, <laughs> slacks, scotch. It's a party. He has scotch in hand. Very distinguished right now. I feel like. Um, there were a lot of questions around constellations. We talked about that. I don't know if you had any thoughts about that, but we talked a lot about the day and night cycle, light at night in general, um, the the stars, the cosmos. I think the cosmos are a great touch. Um, we talked about a lot of that as well. Um, this is an interesting one, and I, I just I'm going to read through it just to see how how Armored Cell reacts. Are there any details about the very gods influencing our gameplay? Steven does not want to explain that as it may take away from all the work from the team. The only context he gave was that the gods are an active part of the story and each culture has their own interpretation of the whims of the gods. Curious what you think about that. Damn straight. What does that mean? They, we, they all have their own interpretation, so there is no set <laughs> rule based on. So it's not like the the phoenix, the goddess of creation, is all well and good. Some people didn't want to be created. Some people didn't want the life, and you gave it to them. So that, that that's uh, that's not right. That's oh my gosh. Not cool. I, mean, I feel like people are in the game are going to be running around creating cults. Like I never asked to be born. Oh jeez. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> it wasn't my choice. So I remember when I first came in this community, the very first thing I saw in the um in the Discord for Ashes was a uh they were trying to make a holy crusade against the Tolna, a oh bunch my of paladins. Gosh, right. A bunch of paladins? No, 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 no. It was just people. That wasn't tal don't put that on me. Don't put that on me or, or my and, fellow uh, fellow paladin. And that's and when that. I decided to become Tolna because I like this these people have been victimized and wow. I need to be one of them. You're not my guy. You can't tell me what to do, right? <laughs> That's super good. It's, it was not paladins and Discord. It was a bunch of like filthy necromancers, I think. Yep. You're not even my real god. You're my step god. Leave You're me my alone. Step god. <laughs> That's so good. You're my step god. Oh my gosh. I mean, there was a question about taverns, but I'm not really going to go through it because we've we this is not new news. All right, this is not new info. Um, this this one about will there be a way to produce enough experience for a node for those who want to spend a majority of their time on the open seas? Yeah, absolutely. The open seas have a good amount of content, and that content, when completed, will give its contribution to a nearby node. That's something that living on the sea will be able to contribute. That's cool. Makes you wonder exactly where those zones of influence on the coast are going to like stretch out to. I wonder. Yeah, like you, you also got to think, right? Like, if if the nodes on on the edge of the water or near the ocean, if they didn't get the experience from the ocean, they're significantly worse off than the ones on land. So it makes sense that they would still get the experience from the ocean. Yeah, 
Makes you wonder how far the zone will go out too. That's pretty cool. That is a, that is a good point. Yeah, look like how far they're gonna stretch out into in the ocean exactly, and that it makes you wonder about the coastal node too, the island one we looked at before. Yes. That's that's gonna be interesting. I feel like ooh man, I feel like that. I, I just feel that islands like that are gonna be like hot spots for pirates, man. Already. Whoever's on that island and yeah. the mayor of that land has got to be king of the pirates. I can tell you that. Oh, right. They, they, but because they, they'll own the sea. They're in the middle of the ocean. They cannot own the sea. If they don't own the sea, that's like saying someone has to own your own your law. You, you, you need to own your property. You need to defend your land or like ocean. That. That's funny, man. Here's a good one. I'm curious about this. Here, which game systems do you think present the biggest challenge to the Intrepid team with regard to construction, testing, implementation, and balance? That was a good question. A very good question. And we got yeah. a good answer. It depends on which type of challenge. From a feasibility standpoint, uh, one of the challenges that will always accompany an MMO is optimization on network players and the ability to host a large number of concurrent players. In order to create a compelling world, you require a lot of content. That includes all the classes, NPC creatures, all their abilities. The abilities have a variety of choke points, including the ideation, the game design document, the function design path, the animation, VFX, sound design. So there's a lot that we need to get for content generation, especially for AOC, where this is being done transparently. And I was hoping with that one that we get a little bit of a, of a you know, where where are y'all at on what you need to complete yeah. sort of thing, but we didn't get it. No. Well played. But friend. it is it is interesting that they're talking like about the choke points in design, which mm. like makes me wonder and compare that to who they're trying to hire right now. Mm -hmm. Um and kind of seeing where hmm, well if you're hiring or wanting to hire like a decent amount of people in X space, like I think it might have been in visual effects. I'm not, no, quote me on that. But you then now you know, okay, hmm, that seems to be potential choke point for them getting things out the door for an alpha two test, right? Because they mm -hmm. want to at least have a first pass on all the VFX, the animations, so that that's not necessarily mm -hmm. really a barrier for any testing. Not to say that visuals are a barrier, but considering what they've done between alpha zero and alpha one, I would expect they would want to have like that requisite step up from alpha one to two. Right. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. the way he described it at first with the networking thing, it makes me wonder if he's still trying to increase the cap on the raids. Oh, you know it, you know, he is man. I think he's trying to push that as far as he freaking can. Yeah. Especially if the, if the uh, 5.1. Yeah. The rendering and stuff is yeah like, right how how far is he willing to go how many people does he want in this world at, at, in one particular location man i mean i've never been a fan of like being in the same area and people are phased so you can't even see the people are there yeah. so it's like yeah, you talk to your friends like oh i'm in the, i'm in the main city no you're not where are you i'm in front of the tavern no i'm in front of the tavern Oh, you're in world shard B C. Oh, you need to go back. You're gonna to need to log out, log back in, and try and get into my one. Okay, we'll both log out at the same time, and then you switch. Yeah, and in combat, it's it's the worst when like the servers, you know, not equipped. Ultra Cold Online, I'm talking about you to have as many people as you want in a certain area at the same time. So you get killed by people you can't even see. They're not even rendering. You're just lagging out. So then the game actually becomes about which group can lag the other one out the most, you know, and the game's really about who lags the worst because they're the ones that are going to probably not be able to perform and get stomped. Right. That sucks. That's the worst experience in the world. So I'm glad they're aiming high and trying to see as far as they can go because if they if they manage this one man and they are able to make it to where it's a good play experience with a lot of people in the same place even if we're just talking like you know 500 like if that's as far as they can get that's a hell of a lot further than yeah most games man you're going to be doing a good job and it performs well you know at the cost of like yeah everything because I, I really 
like me personally, I don't like people when they uh, weaponize lag as a as a not as a skill, but as a as a weapon. Yeah. Like, and even even in Rust, like there's some people that build so large of bases that when you load into it, yep. it actually drops your frames from like yes. eighty to twenty. Exactly. There's so many different building blocks that's getting loaded. Yep. That it just fr- absolutely freezes your frames, dude. This is and exactly then, it. And if you're flying a heli near it, you just crash because you lo- you're losing like so many frames. And it's like, oh, you're not flying anymore. Okay, you just crash. Exactly. Like, this is exa- this that that's perfectly said. That's exactly what I'm talking about. When you're using the fact that it will lag people out as a weapon, right? It's yeah. it's it's like right in the domain of like it's not an exploit, but it's the no. same kind of player behavior. Right. Take advantage of this this situation where, you know, like other people can't function or they don't have that same, you know, they don't have that same capability. And then you just basically lag them out. and They're all standing there dwindling out while you're killing them when they finally load everything in their dead. Like, yeah, exactly like that. This is lame. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So well said. So overall, um, I think they they're doing really good. Right. And I don't really expect to have a lot. You know, coming up here, you know, for the next rest of the month or whatever, I am gonna go hit up. Oh, oh we'll hit up Margaret by tomorrow probably or something, and see about that. You know, shout out video or whatever we're supposed to be getting because, yeah, so we're gonna be approaching two months at the end of like next month or this month rather. Yeah. So I'll definitely check on that. Um, we are going to not be online for the for Christmas Day for good reason. I talked to the guy really? who were oh. on. <laughs> I didn't know this. Oh, the... You don't work Christmas? <laughs> we don't work Christmas. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, not, you're not, it's not a job. Those penalty you're... rates. You don't, you don't want to pay any penalty rates. So <laughs> Come on, dude. No time and a half. No damn. time and a half for you. <laughs> What, yeah i just god bless dude i got nothing i don't even want to say what i'm thinking because i just stopped looking at myself in front of me with the, the face paint and the suit for the dress shirt um but the 25th we won't be online so we're going to get what next week and i talked to the guys we are planning the first though we are going to be planning on new year's day so so mark your calendars whatever uh the first is tentative but i feel pretty confident about doing it so that's the plan and we're sticking to it. I don't know when we're getting their live stream. I'm hoping we get it before Christmas. I would really like that to be the case. Cause then we could knock out our, uh, yeah, our discussion. Um, yeah, the following week, but I mean, if they do it on the 30th, that's fine too. Right. So well, what do you want for Christmas from, from Santa Stephen? What do you want from Christmas? What do I want from Santa Stephen? Yeah. For Christmas. What do you want? What, what do you, what, what would he give you for Christmas? Apart from loot. Oh, you just, you know, I mean, that was going to be my answer was going to be uh, apart from loot would be to remove (laughs) maybe some clothes. So you're not running around naked. No, I'd love for him to retract his previous statement and just own that I am not indeed a loot ninja and to take that narrative away. I'd love for him to do that. That'd be great. I want him to be honest. I guess that's why it's a wish list, right? (laughs) I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure he would have appreciated you not running around in your birthday suit too with the uh, new loot. But. There was no birthday suit. It was just my shirt was appeared off. It was invisible. New you can see through it. It was what? there was clothes there. I'm there sorry, officer. I, I'm I'm just wearing my invisible costume. I didn't realize I could do this. At the beach. <laughs> I just this is when somebody's gonna be like walking around naked and be like, I'm wearing my invisible uh, garments. I don't understand why you so there's something wrong. I'm wearing my clothes. It's not my fault you can't see him. They're working as intended. What? <laughs> it would look like. Dude, it, it's it's a good time, man. It's I know we got a lot of December's a month where people are all, you know, they spend time with their family, right? Enjoying the holidays. So if you're here for the next uh podcast coming up, friends, awesome, great. Looking forward to it. If not, totally cool. Um if you uh, want to know my schedule, I'll be staying. Stay tuned for the post show. I'm going to fill you all in shortly. So we'll chat a little bit. So don't go anywhere. Stay tuned and chat for a short after show. Not a longer one, just a shorter one. But before we wind this down, I want to go ahead and let uh, all my homies here on the show shout out their domains where you can find them when they're not on the Ashes Pathfinders podcast. 
Daedalus. Uh, when I'm not in Sim's backyard, you can find me on Twitter oh, at God. the Ashton Herald and on YouTube, youtube.com slash the Ashton Herald. Uh, Armored Cell. And when I'm, not talking to, when I'm not talking to Mini Simmy, I am on the uh, twitch.tv forward slash Armored Cell. There you go. Streaming Rust here, too, from what I understand. So go check him out. Give him a follow. Friends. Wow, what is going on in chat, right? Look at this. You guys stay tuned. I got something for you in the post show, but we might be at the end of today's show, right? Uh, in closing, remember, you don't have to be on the show to be a Pathfinder. You are an Ashes Pathfinder if you're here with us on the journey. So much love to all of you. Do Intrepid Studios, and until next week, live your best lives, walk in the light, and have a great night. We'll see you again real soon, everybody. Bye for now. Take care, everyone. Later.